sloth? Seriously? When you hear the word sloth, perhaps you picture this animal. Or perhaps you picture another animal that has had the word sloth attached to it. (laughs) We tend to connect the word sloth with the idea of laziness. And we who have inherited the Protestant work ethic have little time for laziness in ourselves or in other people. Typically, the word lazy is associated with the word bum. And yet, sloth as a deadly sin? It seems kind of lightweight as a sin. Why is it on this list of deadly sins? And does it really apply to us? Americans in the whole world are the busiest of people. Have you seen the ad that says, vacation like you mean it? We don't even rest when we're supposed to rest. Somehow it doesn't seem like the word sloth would apply to busy Americans, and yet sloth is not just laziness. This is the sixth in the series of seven deadly sins we've been dealing with. Those dark tendencies in our souls that can rob us of joy, ruin relationships, and even wreak havoc in society. But we've also been looking at the virtues that are the opposite of those seven deadly sins, and also the healthy habits that help us move from the deadly sin to the lively virtue. Those early Christians who fled the cities and went into the desert to get away from all that sin discovered when they got to the desert that the sin had followed them because it was in them. And they discovered in their time alone with the Lord that these seven things tend to be the basis of a whole host of other sinful issues And so they recommended that we deal with these as a way of dealing with so many other things. One of those seven was sloth, the one we're dealing with this morning. Early monks who had dedicated their lives to fasting and prayer, they made a vocation to which they had been called by the Lord of prayer They would often find that in the early afternoon, after lunch, and the drowsies would hit. Anybody been there? And as their minds would wander in this prayer time, these godly men would find themselves thinking, I wonder if life in that monastery over there might be better than life here. I think Brother Simon's been snubbing me. I wonder what I did. I wonder if I made a mistake even becoming a monk. Maybe I should go back to the world. Oh, and I forgot to fix that door latch like the abbot told me to. Maybe I better go take care of that before he gets mad. Distraction can be a serious problem And it is part of the issue of sloth. Anything that tends to pull you away from that time with the Lord. Distraction is one variety of sloth. Another variety has to do with a little disc that was popular a few years ago. Do you remember these? For the person who tends to procrastinate and says, I'm sorry, I just didn't get around to it, you could take one of these to that are in the shape of a circle and hand them around to it and say, now that you've gotten this, you can finally get around to it and do that thing you've been putting off. It was a well-intentioned effort, but for people like me who have a problem with procrastination, It wasn't particularly helpful. 
One of the things that the early believers that went to the desert and found all these sinful issues, they discovered that sloth appears as procrastination. We're reluctant to call procrastination a sin. It really is an inconvenience, a problem, a character flaw, but to call it a sin, does that seem strong? We're going to find out shortly why it's not. There's one last variety of sloth, along with distraction and procrastination. A modern-day writer and thinker about these issues has labeled busyness as a form of sloth. We busy Americans can't imagine how in the world that can be sloth. This writer named Peter Kreft says this, a workaholic may be as guilty as a couch potato because the workaholic's constant activity, constant busyness, keeps them from investing time in the most important things in, and people in life. Going with the flow of busyness, constantly keeping after things because things are constantly coming up, actually prevents you from having to do the hard work of choosing what is most important and saying no to the things that are not. Our busyness is actually a form of sloth. Distraction and procrastination and busyness, sloth. Now, generally speaking, the other six deadly sins are things that you do. Sloth is something that you fail to do. It's a sin of omission. We think or feel or do something that we know is wrong or hurtful. That's the active others, but the sloth that is so much a part of our lives is that sin of omission, failing to think or feel or do something right and good. It's about making excuses when God prompts you to do something. Lord, it's not a good time right now. That's not my gift. Lord, if I do that, people are going to think I'm weird. It's about avoiding conflict when conflict is the very thing that needs to be faced. It's about waiting for somebody else to step up. It's about dreaming of somewhere else. Better church. Better partner. Better job instead of saying focused on what's here now. We've not done something wrong, we've just failed to do the right thing. And failing to do the right thing could hurt someone. That's the very reason that the early believers labeled sloth as one of the deadly sins. Diagnosis to deal with sloth, you'd think it might be discipline. I'm going to suggest something else. The diagnosis is really a lack of devotion. Devotion implies both affection and action. When you're devoted to someone or something, you don't just care about them, you care enough to do something. I really intended to get her that card for her birthday. How do you move from sloth to devotion? How do you develop this whole life habit of affection with action. I'd like to suggest 
the healthy habit of attentiveness. By attentiveness, I mean making our way through the day with our eyes and ears open to what God might be showing us and then being ready to do it. I wish I could tell you how many times when Lindsay was younger she would be chattering away and I would be listening with half an ear and looking at something else and then she would say something important or ask me a question and I would simply go, "Uh uh-huh, okay. Not realizing that I was not paying attention and she knew it and it hurt. Attentiveness is taking the time to pay attention and then acting on what you've seen and heard. In Ephesians 5, Paul puts it this way. Wake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful, then, how you live. Not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Don't spend your life sleepwalking through life. Those first disciples of Jesus were so excited because he's coming to Jerusalem for the Passover. And their excitement and their devotion to him led them to cut down palm branches and take off their coats and put them in the road as a gesture of their love for him. They loved him and they did something about it. And we know that changed over the course of the week. So we, using that as an example, can learn to go through the day listening to Jesus Because he's got something fresh for us day to day. Sometimes it's just a matter of saying to us, I really love you. One of the dangers that we face at Zion Church in having communion eight times a year is that it can become very routine. You come up, you take the bread, you take the cup, you hear the blessing, and then you go back and sit down. And you do it often enough, and you do it without thinking. The real problem is not the frequency. The real problem is attentiveness. No matter how often you share in the communion service, are you paying attention to what Jesus did and to what he may want to say to you this morning in this communion meal. I don't know what God might be wanting you to do in these days. Maybe the only thing he wants from you is to be with him more intentionally, to attend to him and let him speak into your life. That's one of the things he wants to do with you this morning in communion. It's easy to excuse sloth, but it's important to remember it really is a sin that we need to combat by paying attention and practicing devotion.